My earliest memory in life was drowning, if you can believe it. I crawled off the dock, fell in the water, and floated face down, looking at the beautiful rainbows. And I thought it was the most incredible place in the world until my mother snatched me out of there and pulled me in close, screaming. And I was laughing. But I remember what it looked like. And I've wanted to be in the water ever since. When you get out there on the launch pad, you're anxious to go. You want them to light the seven and a half million pound of thrust. You want to get into orbit. So you're thinking, light this baby and let's go fly in space. As an aquanaut, I get to go into these portals, into the planet, and see the most remarkable things. The thing that makes humans unique is our curiosity are questioning as to why and can I do this. I feel more at home when I'm climbing than at any other time in my life. Even when there's real danger present, I feel such a profound sense of peace. Where I dive, it's like the world's greatest library that we're only beginning to take the first volumes out of. My longest dive was over 20 hours. That was a woman's world record, and I believe it still holds. <laughs> I am the first American woman to summit Mount Everest three times. It's a 60-day expedition. You make multiple trips through very, very dangerous areas, and you have to be committed to that the whole time. Some people say, what is this, some kind of an adrenaline rush for you? You know, do you have a death wish? It's not that at all. It is a desire to solve problems that nobody could figure out. Brain machine interface, is that the coolest thing you've ever heard about? How do you control something by your mind? It's just fascinating. We really are on sort of a frontier. And you don't know until you take that leap of faith how that product or that research or that technology could be applied to improve everybody's life. I find some of the research done into mobility in Japan very inspiring. My father-in-law actually has MS, and a lot of these inventions that we see coming out are about mobility and about keeping people active. If you ask any of the great explorers, they're all going to say, yes, there's an element of science about what we do. But there's also the tremendous thrill, the first motorized flight, the first landing on the moon, the guy to get to the bottom of the deepest cave on Earth. It's exhilarating. When you do push the envelope and you experience fear, it's like there's a new boundary for what is possible. It is that sense of unknown. Every moment, life is happening. And the response that I choose will ultimately affect my life. I was doing a free rappel, about 220 feet, in a big wild cave, and my rappel got out of control. I started to go too fast, and there was one guy at the bottom close enough to the rope to haul down on it. If he hadn't been there, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you now. One night, I, I was on my way home. It was snowy and about 32 degrees, and it's unbelievable, but a police car pulled across the road, and there was nothing I could do to stop, and I slammed right into him. And that event was just shocking to me. In a moment like that, understanding what the consequences could be, it blows away everything else. It blows away thoughts of the future, thoughts of the past. In a way, it's almost like an extreme meditation moment. 
I've crashed thousands of vehicles, literally thousands of vehicles, but I've never been in a crash before. What that cemented in my mind is the need to do something beyond airbags, seatbelts, and safety structures.